Hi there, Simon from SimonWood.com. Four red Bordeaux in front of me. Uh, three of them from a uh, the top end of the Appalachian spectrum. So we've got two from Margot, one from Santa Steph. But uh, the first one is uh, Basic Bordeaux Superior. Basic, but I mean, let's have a look. It's uh, Chateau Pay La Tour, Reserve du Chateau, Bordeaux Superior, 2008. And the difference between Bordeaux and Bordeaux Superior, I think Bordeaux Superior has to have a slightly higher minimum level of alcohol. Uh, it's not the youngest wine here, but I thought it's the um, uh, least ambitious, shall we say that, so I'll, I'm plonking it first. Anyway, let's give it a whirl. Well, mostly Merlot here. I think, I think it says 95% Merlot. Yeah, 95 Merlot, bit of Cabin, bit of Petit Verdo. Um, and what comes out is this very ripe edge of Merlot. Uh, that's like toffee character coming through. Um, slightly baked fruit. Uh, and but with just a tint, uh, just a tint hint of um, leafy freshness um, lurking there in the background. It smells like it's going to be quite full-bodied, but um, not hugely classy, but quite an enjoyable glug. Let's have a see. Yeah, maybe veering just too much for me towards the towards the jammy end. Uh, it's okay, um, and uh, but I, I I miss a little bit of fragrance in there. Uh, it feels like it's quite a solid. Um, yeah, th that sweet baked edge maybe just uh, just takes over that a little bit too much. Okay to start with, uh, but um, have more um, hopes for the next three. So let's stick into them. Uh, first one is Harvey Nichols uh, 2009 Margot, made for them by Rosanne Segler. And uh, I'm not sure of the, the blend here. Does it say uh, blah, blah, Cabernet and Merlot, 12 months, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's give it a whirl. And immediately uh, you're in the uh, yeah you're in the presence of something quite a bit more ambitious. So uh, there, there's this uh, soft round confidence about it. But the first one felt like it was just trying that little bit too hard. Here it's got a fragrant bit. It's got an earthy bit. It's got the fruity bit. Uh, it's got. It feels like it's I mean, in terms of alcohol. I wouldn't be surprised if the first one was higher. Yeah, 14% on on the first one versus 13.5% here. Better vintage. It feels like it, it's not trying as hard. Uh, and in the process, being from a, uh, a finer, uh, finer vineyard, uh, from a finer producer, uh, and it's just effortlessly succeeding in, in outclassing the first one. I think it outclasses it in price as well, but uh, hey, let's taste it. It's that dry, elegant, juicy freshness. Um, the fruit's ripe, but it's not overripe, so you're getting these um, things like the, the plums, um, black currants, um, not so much maybe of the blackberries, it's, it really is on that quite fresh end. And, and there's also something um, a bit more exotic, I don't know whether it's something like pomegranate in, in there. Um, and then this saline edge as well, knitting its way through through the wine, uh, keeping it fresh, keeping it perky, and plenty of what I call life beyond fruit. So the finish I'm left with is there is fruit there, and uh, there, there's uh, some tannin, there's just that little bit of chewiness that's going to keep it going for a good few number of years now but all in all it's just this lovely harmonious uh, entity that is got more than just that fruit it's it's it, it, you've got something of the soil there you've got something of the good vintage and um, something that i really want to uh, maybe have another slug on tasty wine yeah very impressive uh, let's try the next margot which is um uh, property i don't know uh, chateau uh, chanteloun and there's a picture of a dog barking at the moon, which I'm afraid reminds me of Ozzy Osbourne. Uh, 2007, Margot. Don't know anything about the producer. It says here, Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon. Puts the Merlot first, so maybe makes me think that uh, uh, it's got the lion's share of the blend. But I could just be guessing there. I'll see if I find out. I'll flash it up on screen for you. Now this one's starting to show a little bit more uh, earthy, leafy, leathery development. And I think some of that leafiness comes from it's not quite as uh, ripe and juicy a vintage as 2007. So the, the fruit, the grapes weren't quite as ripe in the, in the first place. But also it's going into that um, leafy undergrowth edge that, uh, uh, that, uh, that good Bordeaux acquires with time. Um, I don't think that, uh, I think two years from now on the 2009, that, that 2009 will still be a lot fresher. This one seems to be maturing, not quickly, but um, maturing steadily, shall we say. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's going to have quite the highs of, um, of uh, the, the Harvey Nichols one, but um, it feels like it's going to be a, an, another rather satisfying wine. Let's have a see. Bit of tobacco. Um, a gentle fruit, um, yes, yeah, definitely on, on that black currant bit of what they call the cigar box character coming through. 
Um, nicely made, not overdone, not trying too hard to uh, to impress. And again, I mean, this is 13% alcohol. There's, there's some Bordeaux's now that are moving up to 14, 14.5% alcohol. Here at this level, it feels in balance. It feels nicely, nicely posed and poised. And uh, um, I like it. Yeah, I, I don't like it quite as much as the, uh, as, as the previous one, but um, I do like it. It's got a refreshing quality, that's what I like about it. Maybe not the concentration of the first one, but um, um, good uh, lunchtime claret, if you want to call it that. But uh, yeah, it's got that, that, uh, that vibrancy still about it. Nice wine. Final one, uh, 10 years older now. Uh, Chateau Haute Marbouze, 1997, uh, from Saint Estef. Uh, now, Haute Marbouze, not a uh, quite famous chateau, but uh, not a classed growth vineyard. Uh, but. Um, one of those that I think uh, started to be um, started to impress in the in the, in the 1980s and was was at the time quite flashy. Used a lot used a lot more uh, wine making techniques and new oak than a lot of the people around them. Other people have since caught up, so it, it's not quite as as much of an outlier as it was, but um, uh, usually pretty decent standard. Uh, but 1997, uh, 15 years old now, should be. Um, should it be tiring? 1997 wasn't the greatest of vintages, but uh, let's have a see. And it is showing its age. It's got this um, slightly figgy character. Um, and the fruit's gone. It's, yeah, it's lost its freshness, uh, but there's this nice plummy, round, juicy softness, almost starting to go to get to develop a little, little bit of spiciness. One of the problems with wines um, that are at this stage in their maturity is that they've matured nicely, but it starts becoming difficult to uh, tell which part of which part of the world they come from. You're not supposed to say that, but um, uh, when you have them in isolation, of course it's typical Bordeaux, but then you shove them in a lineup of uh, of uh, of Rhones and they think, hmm, or in Burgundies, and you go, hmm, because there's some, there is like this rounded, truffly undergrowth softness here that uh, uh, that I would find quite easy to confuse for some other areas. Light, lively, figgy, touch of the consomme about it. I mean, uh, uh, a technical a technical person would probably criticise it for a little bit of Britannomyces in there, but uh, they, that, that, that's just adding here for me a little bit more. Uh, complexity um, and the fruit behind is sufficiently bold to be able to cope with it. Um, maybe the finish is just a little bit dry uh, and maybe it would have been better about five years ago but it, honestly today it's looking it's looking really nice uh, and I've um, I've double decanted it so it's probably uh, showing far more um, forward than uh, than it would be if I if I just uh, if I, I just poured it straight out. There was there was quite a reasonable amount of sludge in the bottom but. Uh, um, but it's a nice wine, uh, and again, as with the uh, the one before, and I think as the, the 2009 Margot will be uh, when it's, it's starting to get into its uh, uh, middle middle to late age, um, it's still got this refreshing edge. Um, that's what good red Bordeaux should have. It should have um, a mouth filling flavour, uh, but it should be full flavoured, medium bodied, rather than full flavoured, medium bodied, uh, full bodied, medium flavoured. If that was anything, that was that was seen, seemed to be what they tried to do with the first wine. Other three, far more successful for me, and but pricier. Hey, but um, they've all got something to say for themselves. A bit like me, really. I better shut up for the moment. See you soon.